Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am going to be doing my own nails. This is going to be pop-off method version, so do note that the prep that I'm doing is not for like normal wear. Just putting it out as a disclaimer, don't go trying to prep your nails like this and then them pop off and then you're mad at me. This is not for long wear of the nails, although I did struggle a little bit to take them off, but regardless, this is for the pop-off method and I'll share with you guys how I do that. So here I'm pretty much just simply prepping my nail. I am gonna be doing like a short form video version of this, reason why I'm sharing with you guys the full version video on YouTube. So I'm gonna be prepping my cuticles specifically because I haven't done anything to them in a while and it just needed it. If I'm going to be recording a set on myself, I go ahead and prep my nail simply by doing cuticle work and I wanna make sure that my cuticle is nice and clean so that the nails look presented nice and clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that diamond bit that y'all saw me using at a speed of 4,000 RPMs. And I'm actually just gonna be focusing again on that cuticle. We are just trying to push back the cuticle area, remove any excess dead skin. And then here I'm using a tiny tapered diamond bit. And the reason why I'm using this one is because I didn't have my cone one. I think that's what it's called. Um, I will leave everything linked down below, but I typically use a pointed tip one to kind of pull up the cuticle or the dead skin so that I can easily nip that off, which I'm doing here. But that bit did a pretty good job. So I simply am just focusing on that cuticle area. I'm not doing any other prep. I did trim my nails. That is just for preference. You don't have to do that. So now I'm taking my cuticle nippers. You can take scissors, whatever you like. Yes, I know this is like a huge change. I have been using cuticle nippers and if you are an OG viewer of mine, <laughs> y'all know I was just terrified of them, but I've gotten a lot more comfortable. So I've been using it a lot on myself specifically and I've been trying to use it here and there on my clients if needed. So cuticle nipper of your choice. I will leave my favorite ones linked down below. I do purchase a lot of stuff off of Amazon, so do note that, um, but Again, just nipping off just that dead skin and you can tell if you wanna practice your manicures like this, definitely do it on yourself. That way you get a good grasp of what is live skin and what is dead skin. So make sure you are practicing on yourself. Next, I'm gonna be taking a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe. This is not for prep purposes. I'm just simply cleaning off that excess dust. You don't have to do this. Again, pop-off method. Now I'm gonna be taking my cuticle oil of choice because I'm gonna be doing a pop-off method and I still want them to last a little bit longer. I like using this cuticle oil. This one is my collab with Profiles Backstage. It's like a drier cuticle oil. It's not super oily. So it's nice for like finished results of video, of nails for videos or pictures, but it's also really good because it's not super oily to the point where as soon as I go to file, my nail's gonna pop off. So that's like the good type of oil that you wanna use. I'm gonna go in next with a matte top coat. You could use a shiny one if you'd like. I just grabbed this one because it was an extra bottle that I had. So it is a matte finish top coat, gel top coat, of course. And I'm going to be doing a thin layer of that. Make sure that that bottle that you're using with your pop-off method, you do not use on any other person. Otherwise, that will get contaminated with the oil that you're using. Therefore, transfer onto the surface and you're gonna get like a shiny, streaky, matte look. So definitely, we do not want that. Now I'm gonna go in with a second layer. I'm curing that in the light again, full 60 seconds. I am kind of going in and out of the light because it does get a heat spike. So make sure you are paying attention of that. And then I'm going to pre-shape my tips before I put them on my nails because I do not wanna risk the filing or cutting to end up popping off. So I'm being extra careful with all the steps. And typically I would just go ahead and glue them on and then I would go and file them, but I'm gonna do everything pre-applying. That way, again, they don't pop off. So I went ahead and trimmed them with some nail tip cutters and then we're going in with Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick File and filing that tip, making it nice and super straight and I wanna make sure that I am doing this all again before I apply it on my nail. I've done it before where I go to try to file it and it just starts lifting and I freak out and then it's a disaster. 
So then you have to redo the process and that is not fun. So always do everything pre-applying them. I'm just using some brush on glue and applying those tips. These tips are from Amazon. Again, I love Amazon. It is very affordable. They have really good products and it gets to your house very, very quickly when you are in a pinch. Now right into our design, now that we have our base for our design, I'm going in with Fiesta Sista from Not Polish. If you didn't know, now you know, Not Polish is one of my favorite brands to use and I always recommend because they are really, really good products. Fiesta Sista is one of my must have colors. If you want a bomb pink color, this one's it. Look no further, it is perfect for every skin tone. It looks just as good on lighter skin tones as it looks on dark skin tones, so definitely a must. I am using a size 12 acrylic brush and for my monomer for reference, I'm using the Chiara Sky Monomer. I'm gonna go ahead and just pretty much do my basic acrylic application for long nails and really all nails in general. I try to stick to multiple beads instead of just one. I find that I'm able to build it up a lot easier. Get that apex nice and round where it needs to be. Do note, these are nails that are going to be coming right off so I'm not building up the apex as much as I typically would want to. The nails are gonna be a lot thinner than you would or should do them on a client simply because they're just nails for the design. I'm not doing them to keep them on. So for our nail art, I'm gonna be doing a marble type of design on this finger. And I'm taking a combination of Fiesta Sista, this beautiful purple color from Profiles Backstage, and then this pink color. They both have a light shimmer to it. So do note that it has a very, very light, but really pretty shimmer to it. And I'm simply just taking those colors and kind of marbleizing it in the center. And then I'm taking this chunky glitter from Profiles Backstage as well. I'll leave everything linked down below. I honestly do not remember the names off the top of my head, but I'm pretty much just adding that to the center and the tip. And then I'm gonna be ombre that Fiesta Sista color at the top. I like to keep my top area or where my natural nail area is a lot more like a natural color or clear or something like that, I don't know why. Like, especially if I'm doing them on myself to keep them on myself. If you go back to like the designs that I've done on myself, I always have like a neutral nail bed area. It's just my comfort zone. And for whatever reason, if I do full color, it just freaks me out. So next I'm gonna be encapsulating the design. If you did not already know, you wanna make sure you are encapsulating colored acrylic. One, to save a little bit of money and two, to add the strength back in to the colored acrylic. Colored acrylic is mixed with pigments and of course it takes the strength away from that base clear acrylic that they're using. So you wanna just reinsert it back into it. And I like to save my product. So I always try to use very thin layers of my colored acrylic and then I go in and encapsulate because you can always find a good clear acrylic but it's hard to find good colored powders. Now for my middle finger, I'm so sorry, but I did record the short version of the design on this nail. So I ended up stopping the camera and I recorded it vertically for Instagram. So that nail will be on Instagram, but I will be showing you exactly how I did the same design on my pinky nail, so do not worry. Here I'm just encapsulating again using clear acrylic and just pretty much layering it on there. Now for the ring finger, we're gonna be doing ombre. I have not done ombre nails. I really haven't done acrylic nails on myself in a really long time. I've been doing just gel polish and gel designs and I had an itch to do acrylic. So here we are and I just wanted to go back to my roots because my marble encapsulation ombre was like my thing when I first started doing nails. So I just wanted to get back to it and see if I still could come up with a really cute design. And of course we're gonna be doing it fall inspired so that's where all the leaves and everything come in. But that brightness because y'all know I'm in Florida and it is hot here and I'm not ready for all the fall transition. I just am not. The weather does not allow me to. So I'm just adding thin layers of the colored acrylics, blending them together very easily. As you can see, it was very, very easy to do when you're using good acrylics. And then I'm just making sure that I use very light motion when blending it, of course. And then we added that Fiesta Sista color again. 
So again, this is the same design that I did on the middle finger. We're using the acrylic glitter mix as my base and I'm actually gonna be using that to adhere my little leaves. I love these leaves, but sometimes they stick up. So a little hack, just go ahead, put it on your finger on something and bend it so that it lays nice and curved to the nail. That way you don't have any of the little edges sticking up and then when you go to file, they get filed off. You always wanna make sure that it is nice and flat to the nail to where you can fully encapsulate that chunky glitter. So this works with butterflies, leaves, bats, whatever you're using, it works the same. You could just go ahead and bend it easily. And then I'm just adding some more glitter, a little foil, and then ombre that Fiesta Sista color over again near the natural nail area. And then we're gonna encapsulate with clear acrylic. Now when it comes to filing process, I'm gonna use my e-file just for the cuticle area and then I'm gonna be using my hand file for the rest of the nail. It's just been my comfort. Um, sometimes my pain in my hands gets a little bit much. If y'all didn't know, I have Lyme disease and that just comes with a bunch of terrible little effects, you know, on my body. And sometimes my hands just are not in the position or the strength or the ability to be able to like overly file with an e-file. So. To alleviate that kind of like pressure that I'm using or the position that my hand is in, I just have been going to my hand file when it's a lot lighter than an e-file hand piece. So it's just a lot easier on me, honestly, these days. So if I am having like one of those flare up moments, I just go ahead and just use my hand file. I've noticed that I get a smoother finish anyways, so might as well. And I don't know, I feel like hand filing for whatever reason is so satisfying. I'm being extra careful when I'm doing this. Again, I do not want my nails to pop off. So I'm focusing on those sides first. I did file the tip, I think, and then I'm gonna go over the entire surface of the nail. And you notice how I am holding that nail as sturdy as possible. I don't want too much wiggling back and forth. Again, I do not want that nail to lift, but I also do the same thing with my clients because I don't want them to feel any type of discomfort. So I am gonna make sure that I'm holding that nail nice and sturdy. Here you see me using my index finger underneath the nail so that it doesn't wiggle back and forth and kind of just little motions like that um, on myself, of course, to keep it from moving. And then on this nail, I'm using my middle finger to kind of stabilize it a little bit as well. And then I'm using my thumb to kind of press it down on that. That way it doesn't move up and down. Little things that you don't really pay attention to until you're actually watching yourself do it. It's kind of just like a second nature type of thing at this point. So again, those sides and then the surface, filing it nice and smooth, and then we're gonna crisp out that tip. And then of course, I have to give y'all a little bit of an update off topic, but if y'all missed it, I had a meet and greet with Not Polish and Tao. It was so much fun. So huge shout out to everyone that showed up here in Pensacola, Florida. I had such a great time doing demos, meeting y'all, chatting with y'all. I know I had some pretty deep conversations with a lot of you guys. So I really, really appreciate that. And know from the bottom of my heart, I love when you guys show up for me and just meeting y'all makes me so, so happy and it is so heart filling. So thank you guys so much for showing up and I cannot wait for the next one. So definitely stay tuned. Maybe I will be coming near you at some time. So now I'm gonna be taking a lint-free wipe, a little bit of Young Nail Swipe, cleaning that surface. And I'm actually gonna be doing a little bit of nail art. So I snatched these new metallic chrome liners or gel paint i should say from not polish so i wanted to give them a go right off the bat very easy to work with i really like the consistency so definitely 10 out of 10 on that now i will say it's not as chrome as i would have wanted it to be i wanted it to be like super super shiny if y'all know any hacks to like get it shiny i don't know if i was supposed to do anything different but it does have like kind of a gritty or grainy look to it so on the ring finger i just did a flame and then I'm gonna be adding accents of that same chrome throughout to kind of match the little leaves that I used where we encapsulated it. So around the cuticle on the thumb and the pinky, I'm doing some little starburst on my middle finger as the accent nail. And then I did a stripe uh, horizontally on my index finger and you'll see it all come together. But that's pretty much it when it comes to the nail art. It was super easy to work with, super, super cute. Again, although it wasn't like super chrome-like, 
I love how it looks. It still gives that metallic finish. I cured it in the light for a full 60 seconds and it just added that like perfect touch to kind of bring the design together. Now I'm going in with Gloss It from Not Polish. Y'all already know this is my go-to shiny top coat. It is bomb and this is a new bottle so it just felt so good to use it. I feel like it's just nice when you have a nice new product. <laughs> and then of course, we're gonna wipe those sides before we go into the light, and then we're gonna cure for a full 60 seconds, always, always, always. And then we're gonna top with some cuticle oil, but that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton, and I'll see you guys next time.